right, what is going on everybody? This is Alex once again with Sam for another episode of the EOC News Flash. This is our Ikoria Limited set review, and we are on to the blue cards. My favorite cards, personally. Because, you know, counter spells and stuff. Which I know you hate. And the three words, or no, the two words, in response. <laughs> Turtle. Turtle. Um, yeah, so if you haven't watched one of these before, we are operating on a four-point scale. Uh, the ones are the cards you should never play in your pools. They're basically the bottom of the barrel, draft chaff, utterly garbage. Uh, twos are your more common filler. Your decks for both draft and sealed will commonly be primarily made up of these cards. Uh, your threes are your more explosive removal spells, premium uncommons. Um, most rares fall into this category as well. And then fours are going to be the bombs that pull you into a color. You open your first draft pack or your sealed pool. You see the rare, you're like, I don't play this. And it just pulls you in because it's so damn powerful. Those are your fours. We also have S for sideboard, which are the cards you would bring in if your opponent presents you with a threat that you wouldn't be able to deal with with your normal configuration. And the Bs are your build-around cards that require a deck to be built around to be more productive, in a sense. Um, if you haven't already, go back and check out the white cards, and let's dive. <laughs> you forgot a rating. I did? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. We have, a, a rating. we have an A rating. We have an A category as well. So if, uh, factor. if she loses her mind over a card, due to the art specifically, um, you'll know. <laughs> so let's dive right in. Get it? It's a, uh, uh, yeah. it's a turtle. Mm -hmm. Anyway, uh, this is, forgive me here, Aegis, Aegis, Aegai, uh, Crash. We will go with Crash or Squirt. You know, it's a turtle. Uh, anyway, uh, it's a one blue creature turtle, common. I got yep. that right, sorry. It's a zero five. Yeah, un unfortunately, we got kind of spoiled with the uh, the Flash Turtle from There's Beyond Death. <laughs> um, this one is by no means exciting at all. Um, it's a 1.5 if you need a defensive play to get sort of your to your late game and your more controlly blue decks. It's serviceable, but that's about it because it's really not doing anything else. Now, it can attack. It doesn't have defender. So if you have the uh, the, the, the white enchantment the, with flash, uh, steady footing, mm -hmm. you could turn this into a, effectively a 5-5 five, five attacker. Why you would do that? No idea. But uh, it's a 1.5 for me. Not all that exciting. Was oh, it? It's a... Uh... Uh, no, 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 no. I'm going off on a... Oh, yeah, solid footing. That's what I'm thinking of. Brain tangent. Huh. Uh, crush, crash from Finding Nemo Turtles. Yeah. No, again. Yeah. Anyway. I'm sorry. Next! The anticipation <laughs> was killing me for this one. Anticipate! Oh, God. It's one in a blue... <laughs> It's an instant common. Look at the top three cards of your library, put one of them into your hand, and the rest on the bottom of your library in any order. Yeah, so we've seen this card several times in the past couple of years. It's always kind of like the blue uh, blue card selection spell that we usually get here. It's perfectly fine. You know, most blue decks are going to play a copy or two of this. Helps you hit your land drops, helps you find your threats, your removal. Very good stuff here. It's a solid two. You will most, most of the time always play blue. Uh, play this in your blue decks no matter what kind of blue deck you are playing. Um, obviously, mid-range and control decks will be able to take advantage of this uh, more so than you're more aggressive. Moving on to... Archipelagor? Archip Arch Archipelagor? Archip Archipelagor? Archipelagor? Arch 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 Archie. Archie. Uh, <laughs> hey, hey, guys, this is Archie. He's our friend. He's a Leviathan. He's kind of nice. Um, he's <laughs> this thing. Five and two blue. Uh, he's a creature. Leviathan. He is uncommon. He is a seven seven. Ooh, oh, he's a big, big guy. boy. Uh, whenever this creature mutates, tap up to X target creatures where X is the number of times this creature has mutated. Those creatures don't untap during their controller's next untap step, and you can mutate it for five and a blue. He's expensive. He's expensive. Um... Typically, we see an effect like this that hits one creature, usually about the three mana range. Two and a blue is typically where this sits. Um, one blue, blue, somewhere in that three mana range. Um, we have seen effects like Sleep, which will tap their entire team until and they skip their next untap step. Um, but something like this, I think, is actually quite powerful, especially in a 
you know, if you didn't get a good finisher in your blue deck, this is a pretty good bet to go with it. Um, because the, the tempo loss, especially in the later game when the board is starting to get to be clear or clogged up or, you know, lots of threats have been removed, to bring this down and mutate it off of something else and tap something down for a turn and then be able to untap without a whole lot of opposition and then maybe, you know, mutate it again. Because if you're hitting one creature, then two, then three. I mean, this, this goes out of control if it mutates multiple times over the course of a couple of turns. Yeah, it takes a lot of mana. It's late in the game, but this is a very powerful threat here. Um, I give us a 2.5. I am really excited to have Archie just crush people. <laughs> I, think the card's, I think the card's cool. Here's Archie. Here's Archie. <laughs> I don't like this. <laughs> Avian Oddity, that is a very good name for it. Um, I, I don't like this at all. <laughs> it's a three and a blue creature bird thing. Uh, uncommon, it's a two four with flying. You can cycle it for two and a blue, and when you cycle it, put a flying counter on target creature you control. Yeah, so th this is, there's a weird push-pull with this card. The the two four body, especially in the air, is, is perfectly serviceable. Um, but, you know, if you do, I, I like that you can set almost a trap for your opponent, let's say they're trying to get in for the last few points of damage in the air, and you get to spring this and have you know a surprise block from the ground. It's pretty cool. I just don't like this art. <laughs> so many tails. Tails, wings, beaks. It's it's a solid too. It's a very flexible card, um, and I think that we'll see that actually a lot, especially in the blue cards. There's a good amount of flexibility, so you really have to kind of be on your toes with what your opponent's doing at all times, whether they're cycling or drawing extra cards. There's there's a lot that blue can do in this set, and I am all for that. Let's not worry about questions like that and go to our next card. Boon of the Wish Giver. Now he's cool. He's like, yeah. Yep, that is Eluna. Four and two blue, sorcery, uncommon, draw four cards, or you can cycle it for one. Yeah, this card is pretty wild, actually. Um, in any game of limited, drawing, you know, four cards, four plus cards, is absolutely game-breaking, because you know, that puts you so far ahead on resources, and especially if you're in blue, you've been cycling, you've been drawing your cards on things like Anticipate, you're getting ahead on card advantage very quickly, and a card like this will... will almost guarantee to shut the door on your opponent with whatever you draw. Um, and I do like the ability to cycle it as well, especially for such a cheap cost. So that if you're trying to hit a crucial land drop, you can just get rid of this, um, you know, in a pinch. And you, there's actually, I think it's the blue-red mutate um, that we'll get to in a later video that can actually pull instant sorceries back from your graveyard. So if you kind of can chain them together throughout your turns, this is a super powerful effect here. Um, and I gave the boon here a 2.5. Card draw is king. Neat. Neat. <laughs> Next. Let it out. <laughs> it gets out later in another card. Okay. Capture sphere. Spear, 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 and yeah, spear, yeah. Three and a blue. Enchantment are a common flash enchant creature. When capture spear enters the battlefield, tap enchanted creature. Enchanted creature doesn't untap during its un or during its controller's untap step. Yep. So this has been kind of blue's removal in the past couple of sets um, throughout the last couple of years. This whole tapping and it won't untap during their untap step. Uh, we first saw this in... Guilds of Ravnica, uh, the Demir decks and Izzet decks took really good advantage of this card, and I think we'll see the same here. Um, yeah, it's a little pricey, but the ability to do it at instant speed, and there's even a, a blue-black flash deck that um, will want to play this especially, but any blue deck, um, especially ones that are trying to go to a more mid-late game, will take full advantage of this card, and the, the art's pretty adorable too. Even though the dinosaur is stuck, he does get out in another card. Moving on! That is some cool art. Very cool. I like this one. Reminds me of Harry Potter. Convolute. Two and a blue instant common counter target spell unless its controller pays four. You know why I like this card? Because it doesn't mill cards. Like, didn't say please. Yeah. <laughs> 
I'm happy to say that there is no common mill that I can remember in this set because Eldrain just put a terrible taste in my mouth for that. Um, that being said, uh, Convolute is a, is a is a perfectly serviceable card for limited. Um, typically, we get something like this. We get a cancel effect, which is just one blue blue counter target spell. Um, seeing a this kind of mana leak variant where you have to actually pay mana to get your spell through is you know it's it's it just changes up the whole the game a little bit for for blue mages and limited. Um, this one's pretty solid. It's a one point five. Um, depending on the speed of the format, however, this can actually become quite powerful, especially if your opponent's trying to evolve, you know, not evolve, but mutate massive creatures. Um, you can certainly catch them off guard with this and, you know, spike them a little bit. So it's, it's good. Um, certainly not that exciting, but it's, you know, good for a 1.5. 1, 1. Next up. This card makes me a little crabby. <laughs> Crustacean, Crustacean, one of those two. It's a three and a blue creature crab. It is a common with flash and it's a one six. Yeah, so I recall Wishcoin Crab, which was basically this, but it was a two five without flash. And that card could actually end games. And I did that a couple times. As embarrassing as it is to say, that card was serviceable. Um, the Crystacean here isn't, however. It's good to block with, and that's about it. And I, I'm, I'm assuming some games will, will be ended by this thing at some point. Um, but it's going to be good for the blue-black flash deck, and it pairs well with Capture Sphere. But uh, yeah, it's, it's decent. It's a 1.5. Not terribly exciting. Moving on. Bird. <laughs> Pretty bird. Pretty bird. Aww. Dreamtail Heron. Four and a blue creature elemental bird. Because it, it's glowing like it's elemental. It's really pretty. Uh, it's a Is common. Yep. It's a 3 4 <laughs> with flying. Obviously, it's a bird. Unless it's a cacapo. Whenever this creature mutates, draw a card. You can mutate it for three and a blue. Yeah, this this thing's pretty nuts. Um. I, if, if I needed to, I would happily play this as a 5-mana 3-4 flyer. We already saw that with the Patagia Tiger. Um, and to be able to mutate this thing and get card advantage off of it, I think is perfectly fine. Um, yeah, I'll take a copy, copy of it. I mean, blue-white flyers is always good unlimited. Just flat-out always good. And I think this thing's pretty serviceable as well. So majestic. Majestic as hell, for sure. Uh, I guess I guess on a solid two, you know, just the ability to consistently draw cards is is certainly always something that you've got to keep to keep an eye on it against your opponents. Because if they're drawing more cards than you, you will lose the game. Dun dun dun. <laughs> Escape protocol. That's a big boy back there. Yeah, it is. One in a blue enchantment uncommon. Whenever you cycle a card, you may pay one. When you do, exile target artifact or creature you control, then return it to the battlefield under its owner's control. Yeah. So this is a play on the old card Astral Slide, which allowed you to do this to any creature, including your opponents. And basically the object of the deck was to slide, you know, cycle your cards and blink their cards out of, the, out of combat and basically save yourself. Uh, Comment up with things like Lightning Rift and all kinds of other um, slide. There's a Red White Slide was the, what the deck was called. Um, this is no Astral Slide. This is no Astral Drift either, um, which is the new Modern Horizons version of that. Um, basically, what we're looking for here is um, can you get a good ETB effect off of whatever it is that you're exiling or whatever artifact that you're exiling? Um, if you don't have that, you're you're not really wanting to play this. I don't think you'll see this terribly often unless you are just a dedicated cycling deck. And that's step one. And then having enough ETB effects to go along with those cycles is an even bigger downside to it. So this is a huge build around me card. Um, but I think once you have it in that deck with the ETB effects as well, you got a pretty powerful thing going on there. At that point, the engine's insane. It's like a 2.5. But without all of those things going in, in uh, tandem with it, this is not a very good card, unfortunately. So big, big B, little 2.5 when it all works. Cool, Arthur. Mm -hmm. Next up. Essence Scatter. It's a one blue instant common counter target creature spell. Yep. Uh, bread and butter. We've seen this a bunch of times. 
there will always just be this conditional counterspell, be it negate for non-creature spells, and obviously this is the creature version. Um, it's, it's perfectly serviceable. You know, creatures are king and limited, obviously. Um, it's a solid two. It's always going to be playable unless you are in a hyper-aggressive blue deck, which is kind of a weird thing to say. Um, but yeah, your, your mid-range and control decks will always take advantage of this card. You'll see, you know, I'd happy to happily play upwards of maybe two, three copies in a deck usually. So, good stuff. Cool art, too. I like it. Mm -hmm. Next up, we got Facet Reader. Next, we have Facet Reader. Sorry. <laughs> Old habits die hard. <laughs> One in a blue. It's a creature, human wizard. You're a wizard, Harry. It is a common one, two. You can pay one and tap it, draw a card, then discard a card. Yep. So this is a riff on Merfolk Leader, who can do this by just tapping and drawing and discarding a card. Um, it's it's obvious that Wizards doesn't want to have that effect be so cheap. Um, so we saw this, I, I can't remember the one from War of the Spark that basically did the exact same thing. Um, but, but anyway, this, this is perfectly reasonable here. Um, you know, if you are looking for lands to hit or if you've got excess lands in your hand that you don't need anymore, um, perfectly good to, you know, go with this guy here. It's, it'll be rare that he's attacking, um, but once you get towards the late game and you're just trying to outvalue your opponent, outvalue their resources, I can see, you know, just about any situation where if I've got a couple cards in my hand, I will constantly be drawing and discarding because if my hand is good, it can only get better even if I discard one of the weaker cards from my hand. It, it is there's a there's a there's a famous article over on Channel Fireball that basically it poses the situation of do you draw or and discard or do you keep your hand the same and it's like, well, what if I draw what if my hand's like a 7? and there's only one card left in my deck that can make it be an eight, you will never not draw. So there's, there's a cool push-pull um, to this card. You know, newer players, you'll see kind of misevaluate stuff like this, but, you know, if I'm playing this card in Limited, I am drawing and discarding every single turn that I can with this. My hand can only get better. That's fair. Um, anyway, it's a solid two. <laughs> there's a cat. <laughs> Yes, he looks grumpy. He looks grumpy. Yeah. <laughs> Frostblinks. He is a two and a blue creature elemental cat common. He is a two-two. And when he enters the battlefield, tap target creature and opponent controls. That creature doesn't untap during his controller's next untap step. Yep. This is actually a reprint. Um, this is originally from my core set, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. And the fact that this so perfectly fits an Ikori it just can't be a coincidence. Um, anyway... Um, the effect on it is, is quite powerful to tap and not let it untap. Um, the only trick to cards like this, especially when they're on creatures, um, as opposed to something like Capture Zero, which keeps it tapped permanently, is that you have to be able to take advantage of the tempo that you're gaining from the tap. So you want to be a little bit more aggressive, maybe something like, uh, like a blue-red deck that can you know channel a couple of spells to power for creatures. Um, yeah, just... Capitalize on the tempo that you're getting from this card, and it'll be a lot better. By itself, it's just a 2, but in a more aggressive deck that can capitalize on that, you're pushing upwards towards like a 2.5. And it's freaking adorable. So adorable. Oops. Oh, gosh. There we go. Moving on. Oh, what is the... Whoa. The big bear porcupine thing. Oh, it's back. Angry. <laughs> oh, he's mad. What kind of... He's got a big mouth. It's a bird. It is a bird. It's some kind of bird, bear, porcupine. Are you sure its mouth isn't just open? I don't really why. Well, yeah, because there's the top of the beak. Oh. There's the rest of its jaws. Anyway. Anyway, it's a three and a two blue instant common tap up to two target creatures. Those creatures don't untap during their controller's next untap step, and you can cycle it for one. Yeah, so mm -hmm. this is the perfect counterpoint to Frost Links because I can do this in declaration to your attack step and basically lock out creatures for a whole turn. Hitting two creatures is huge of the card like this. Um, cycling it in a pinch is obviously quite powerful as well, and if you're able to buy it back at a later point in the game, also good here. Um, that being said, five mana is a lot to tap two creatures. Um, we've had much, much cheaper effects than this. Um, a feeling of Dread did it for one and a white, so why can't we do this here? Who knows? Um, anyway, it's a solid 1.5, maybe somewhere down at like the 1.75 range, but uh, most blue decks will typically play this. It's going to give me nightmares. Well, 
That's okay. Next up, we got this goober. Jellyfish. <laughs> Glimmer Bell. One and a blue creature elemental jellyfish. It is a common 1-3 with flying. You can pay one and a blue and untap it. Yeah. Mm, th this is really boring. Um, it's it's serviceable. I mean, it's it's nice that you can attack with it and then untap it, give it some pseudo vigilance. I would hope that I have something better to do with my mana. Um, now that being said, you know if this is you know if you're up against a more aggressive deck, this is a perfectly serviceable kind of like with the uh, the Agus Turtle. You know, high toughness, low power. It can soak up some mandatory in the early turns before you can turn the corner and get your bigger stuff online. It's a 1.5 for me. This thing is not very impressive at all. But it's tentacular. It. Oh, God. <laughs> anyway. Gust of Wind. Whoa. 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 God, there it is. Gust of Wind. <laughs> Three and a blue sorcery common. This spell costs two less to cast if you control a creature with flying. Return target non land permanent you don't control to its owner's hand. Draw a card. Why this is an instant is beyond me. Why this costs four mana is beyond me. <laughs> I mean, it's like blink of an eye without the kicker on it, and you get... That was an instant speed spell, though. I don't... I'll play this, but I really don't want to. The card draw is nice and all, and the ability to play it for two mana is nice. Um, but doing it on my turn to bounce a creature back to their hand is just... I'd rather do that at instant speed. So this, this is unexciting, but probably necessary for like a blue-white flyer deck. If I'm paying two mana versus four mana, I'm much, much happier. So at that point, I give it a two. Otherwise, it's a 1.5. This is not exciting stuff. So the cheapest it'll get is two? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, one and a blue. And at that point, I'm happy to play it. Beyond that, probably not. Next up, we've got a little snare action. Pampering Snare. One and a blue. This card makes me really sad. It's an instant common. Creatures your opponents control get negative two, negative zero. Sorry, minus two, minus zero. Until <laughs> end of turn. And you can cycle it for two. Um, so th when I first read this, I thought it was just creature your opponent controlled, but then it was a target. But the fact that this hits everything is pretty significant. Um, the ability to just blank an entire attack step, basically like time walk your opponent in some cases, will be good if they are playing a hyper-aggressive deck. Um, beyond that, this is really just a defensive play from there. And the, the, bare, like the fact that you can cycle all these cards actually gives it a little bit more stock, in my opinion. So, like, the, um, the, 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 the five-mana tap two creatures, but you can cycle it for two, just bumps these things just a little bit higher for me, and that's why I like them. A card like this, would no, I would not be impressed by otherwise. But the fact that if I'm not playing against a hyper-aggressive deck, I can cycle this away in, in the later turns and get something better. So, like, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to I'm gonna say this right now. This might be overreaching my, just, you know, my clout, my, you know, my whatever you want to call it. The cycling decks for this limited format might be the best thing going. Because you can play all of the cards that aren't as great, but they can always be better. Like, the card... Yeah, cycling is a wild mechanic. Mm -hmm. So that's all I'll say about that. Um, this is a two for me. Very, very, very good card. You know, cycle when you don't need it. Play it when you do. There we go. It's an owl. It is an owl. Keep it secret. Owl keep, keep it you safe. safe. No, Mine was from Lord of the Rings. He wins. Keep safe. One in a blue instant. It is a common counter target spell that targets a permanent you control. Draw a card. Yeah, I've never been high on cards like this. Um, specific. It, it is, that, and that's the, the, the problem with it. Um, you know, we've had counter spells that, tar that only counter spells that target you, the player. Mm -hmm. Very, very strange. Um, so if this turns into a format where removal is just flying left and right, yeah, I can absolutely see the merit for this. And if I am playing a, a blue deck that maybe has just one big finisher, like the uh, the Archipelagor thing, Ar Archipelagor, um, to be able to protect it for a good turn, draw cards as well, 
I can see this being relevant, um, but beyond that, I'm not super excited about this card at all. I'm gonna give this a one, but if I if it, if it if it proves itself, all for it. But I'm not a big fan of this card by itself. Even the card draw is not all that impressive. Um, I think this could have cost one mana and been just fine. But the art is so beautiful. But the art is beautiful, yes. And he's so proud. He's a proud owl. Yes. <laughs> Alright, here we go. It's a derpy dragon. <laughs> it's a... <laughs> Mystic Subduel. One and a blue enchantment aura. Uncommon. It's got flash, enchant creature, enchanted creature gets minus two, minus zero, and loses all abilities. Yeah. All abilities. Now, mutating onto the creature doesn't give it new abilities. That's really important here. But it can gain abilities in other ways with like the keyword counters that can go on creatures. So that's... That's one way to get around this. I, if I'm, I'm assuming that's what it's referring to. I could be wrong about that. Um, but yeah, the, the Derp Dragon is just... I can't. Um, this card is pretty powerful. Um, you know, the fact that it's at instant speed for the Blue Black Flash deck is very important. Um, the fact that it is a permanent shrink is also pretty powerful as well. Um, obviously... You know, putting this on like their their six six is not going to keep it you know from doing what it's supposed to do, but as an early game play, I'm happy to cast this you know just on the first valid target and just slow my opponent down by that much. I like this card a lot. Very good stuff. Um, probably upwards two uh, of a of a solid two for me. Very high two. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Mythos of Aluna, two and two blue sorcery. It is a rare. Yep. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Create a token that's a copy of target permanent. If a red and a green was spent to cast this spell, instead create a token that's a copy of that permanent, except the token has, when this permanent enters the battlefield, if it's a creature, it fights up to one target creature you don't control. This is a weird card. <laughs> a lot of text. The, the, a lot of text, and the fight is just so... Like, it's obvious, it, like, teamers kind of, it's kind of their thing. Um, but Luna doesn't fight anything it's not part of their it's you know uh text when we get to with luna itself um that being said um the ability to copy permanence is is actually pretty important here so you can, you can copy um you know mana rocks planeswalkers enchantments there's a lot of flexibility to this card and this ability to add on that fight if it just happens to be a creature this really lets you tailor um, whatever. This is this is basically more of whatever you need, um, and the fact that you can do it onto your opponent's permanence as well just makes this all the more powerful here. So this is a solid three point five for me, just because of the flexibility. And this is exactly what Blue wants to do. Um, I'm not jumping through hoops to get the red green mana to spend it, but if I can do it, and I need a creature to fight something else, absolutely. This card is really powerful. Next up. Neutralize. One and two blue. It's an instant uncommon counter target spell, or you can cycle it for two. Yeah. Uh, cycling counter spell, just awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. <laughs> the flavor text is funny. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Barely grazed and really dead. Um, so I, I like this simply because... You know, in a, in a longer, more protracted game, the counter spell is awesome. You know, if they're throwing down Haymaker after Haymaker, I'm happy to throw a counter spell. But against a more aggressive deck where I need to be maybe not holding up my mana, but being more proactive by playing a threat or playing a sorcery speed piece of removal, the fact that I can cycle this in the early turns and get to those cards is super important. Um, so like I've already said about all the cycling cards in blue, they're just that much better. So I have some bias here, but this is a solid 2.5 for me. This card is just is so powerful for what it does. So powerful. Oh my goodness, I need it in my life. It's like a frost kitty? It's like a frost kitty mixed with a horse. It's of one mind, <laughs> two in a blue so freaking cute sorcery it is a common this spell costs two less to cast if you control a human creature and a non-human creature draw two cards yeah so divination is the card this is riffing on two in a blue to draw two cards um the ability to make it cost less by having some extra things in play 
I'd say it's pretty negligible. If you get to pull it off, awesome. And if you, if not, it's no big deal. Three mana for two cards is it's perfect serviceable. And it's pretty, and it'll look great in foil. <laughs> um, but yeah, if you can do it, great. If not, so good. Three, two cards for three mana, perfect. Next up, we must release the Kraken. Oh my. <laughs> I don't want to know what's coming out of there. It's a one blue enchantment, uncommon. Uh, whenever you draw a card, put a foreshadow counter on it and remove eight foreshadow counters from it. Create an eight eight blue kraken, 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 <laughs> kraken creature token. Kraken creature token. Wow. That yeah. Say that five times yeah. fast. <laughs> and you can cycle it for two. Yeah. Again, all these blue cards with cycling are just so freaking good. <laughs> You know, if you don't have the time against aggressive decks to get this off, you can just cycle it away. But if it's a, if you're like in a late game kind of situation where this has just been sitting on the board, in a couple of turns, you've got a massive creature to go with it. And if you have any other cycling cards to go along with it, you know, what would be an eight turn clock to get this thing going turns into four turns, three turns. If, you, if you've got any other ability to draw additional cards like off of, of one mind, this just gets out of control. Like, yeah, and he, and you remove the counters. You don't sacrifice this. This is repeatable. Uh huh. This card is insane. He really likes blue. I really like this card. This is a two point five for me. This is an apt like. This is why you have cards like Light of Hope in your deck, because your opponent plays this and you don't have it. And you're like crap. Because if they're playing this, like this is also has a build around me component built into it as well. But if your opponent plays this in the early game, you have a real problem on your hand because you know their deck does one thing and does it well. Draws lots of cards. Anyway. <laughs> no! Base Dolphin! No need to be scared. It was just a dolphin under yeah. there. Um, it's a two blue creature elemental whale. It is a common... Huge flavor fail. It's a dolphin that's a whale. That's what you're tripped up on yes. when there's a flying shark, bird, bear, porcupine. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Anyway, as I was saying before I was rudely interrupted, it is a creature elemental well common. It is a 1-4, and whenever it attacks, another target attacking creature can't be blocked this turn. Yeah, this is actually a really interesting card. Um, I It's kind of like... I want to call it an enchantment almost because it's it's not doing all much damage by itself but what it's going along with like the flavor is just off the chart here for sure except the whole whale dolphin thing um but having four toughness just means it's going to survive combat a good amount of the time you know if you've got the ability to you know shrink their your opponent's cre their power with the uh, was a hampering snare you can do a lot of stuff with this card, and if you've got a big beater that you need to get through, this is your ace. This card's really cool. Um, it's a solid two for me. I don't know. This probably wants to go in a more tempo-oriented deck that has the things like Capture Sphere and the ability to bounce other creatures. Um, you know, so this is the perfect card to capitalize on a you know a tempo-based game here. So I like this card a lot. Very, very cool stuff. Solid two. Um, but obviously you do need something that can go along with it um, before it's doing, you know, anything else really. Mm -hmm. Cool stuff. Here it comes. Binya Binya Polywog. <laughs> Symbiote. One and a blue creature frog. It is an uncommon 1-3. Each creature spell you cast costs one less to cast if it has mutate. Whenever you cast a creature spell, if it has mutate, draw a card, then discard a card. Yep. So this is counting even if you don't mutate it. It's just a cheaper, it's just a cost reduction on there. Um, I, I like this just sort of like just as a static thing that just sits there. If it can get in for combat, sure. It doesn't necessarily need to, however. Um, but, you know, just the ability to just continuously draw cards. And if you are in a heavy mutate deck, um, I'm perfectly happy to play this on the early turns. And again, you know, for drawing cards, we're in really good shape. And we're filtering through our deck to find, obviously, more giant mutate threats. So this card's really cool. I like it. It's a heavy build around me component. But in the right mutate deck, you're pushing to 2.5 here. A lot of value on this guy. Bing, or or gal. Yes. 
pouncing shore shark. Yes. He loves this, but the the dolphin whale was a was a non-starter for him. Um, pouncing shore shark. Yep, it's a four and a blue creature shark beast. Uh, it's an uncommon four three with flash. Whenever this creature mutates, you may return target creature and opponent controls to its owner's this hand. This card is insane. And you can mutate it for three and a blue. So this is exactly what blue wants to be doing in this format. It's playing flash threats. You know, we, we, I've already hinted. There, we'll get to the blue black cards that really care about having flash speed. But this card is just like, it's a beast. <laughs> This reminds me of Victor Crumb. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Goblet of Fire reference there. I'm going to name him Victor. Watch him. Um, yeah, this thing This thing is just absolutely absurd here. The, the ability to be flashed in and bounce creatures is absolutely huge here. Um, you know, bouncing your opponent's mutated creatures and setting them back, like, so many steps. You know, they cast, you know, a creature that mutated onto. That's a huge two-for-one here. Um, and, and being at instant speed just makes this thing insane. And, of course, you know, we're seeing the risk-reward of being a cheaper mutate cost versus the, the just the CMC of it. Very, very good stuff here. Um, 2, 2.5 for me. Card is just nuts. It's a bird. I'm trying to see, like, what's <laughs> going on there. Reconnaissance... Mission. Yep. Two and two blue enchantments. Sorry, I'm still hung up on the art here. <laughs> um, I can't figure out which way they're... It's an enchantment. It's an uncommon. <laughs> Whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to a player, you may draw a card, cycle it for two. Yep. Again, we see cards that just get better because you can cycle them. Um, especially these blue ones here because you're just drawing more cards. And this one just lets you draw more cards. Uh, if, if your opponent resolves this against you, or if you resolve this against your opponent and you've got the board under control, if you're playing a tempo game, or you're playing things like the Shore Shark to bounce their threats, you're tapping their things down, you will put a game away so fast when you just bury them with card advantage here. So, just unreal in just the right deck for it. Obviously very tempo oriented. Um, solid 2, 2.5. I know I'm biased, but I'm not wrong on these cards. They are absurd. 2.5. <laughs> he has a little fish, and I'm just going to pretend that they're friends and that they're just having a chit-chat. He's yeah. giving him a hug. Sure. Sea Dasher Octopus. It's one and two blue. Creature Octopus. Rare. Um, it has flash. It's a 2-2. Two -two. Whenever this creature deals combat damage to a player, draw a card, and you can mutate it for one and a blue. This card's also nuts. Like, this is... Like the cheap cost of this thing and being able to cheaply mutate on there and then just draw cards just absolutely absurd card here this is a solid three for me um yeah i will mutate onto this thing all day long oh look and all the other fishy friends are coming to say hi yeah let's let's go with that solid three massive tempo card here very very good stuff very if your opponent's playing blue and you don't leave things blocked, things are gonna go very poorly for you very quickly if they have this. Good stuff. Sharknado! <laughs> I'm so hyped on this card. <laughs> Shark Typhoon, five and a blue enchantment. It is a rare, whenever you cast a non-creature spell, create an XX blue shark creature token with flying, where X is that spell's converted mana cost. You can cycle it for X one and a blue. Uh, Whenever you cycle Shark Typhoon, create an XX Blue Shark creature token with flying. Yeah, this 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 card is is properly and ridiculous. So again, these are the enchantments that you've got to have things like Light of Hope in your deck for, or the or the green disenchant effects. You've got to have them because these cards exist. And typically, you know, enchantments are the hardest thing to deal with in limited. So you've got multiple effects of ways to blow them up. Um, the only downside to this card is that it costs 6 mana. But it costs 6 mana because it has to cost 6 mana. Because if you untap with this in your deck, your opponent cannot beat you, I'm convinced. Like, if you have any amount of capture spheres, neutralizes in your hand, they are going to lose so fast to this card. I'm betting we're going to find that out real quick. Yep. I love this card. <laughs> yeah, this is a solid 3 for me. Um, even the ability to cycle this in a pinch is just absolutely absurd um you know it's 
You're paying four mana for a two-two flying shark. Yeah, it's I mean it's it, it obviously it scales up you know pretty nicely. Um, I could even see this being a your kill shot after your opponent passes the turn and you got the mana to make a flying shark that's big enough to kill him one hit. Just cycle it. Get the extra card. Make your shark kill him. Like there's there's a lot of flexibility to this card and a very very good card. Three point five. That's it. Best card in the set. Startling development. I haven't seen this card yet. Little birds. I don't want to know what the big thingy there is, so I'm just going to focus on the little birds. It's one in a blue instant common until end of turn. Target creature becomes a blue serpent with base power and toughness 4-4. Four, four. Yeah. Cycle it for one. Yeah, that's a little baby bird turned into a giant serpent. It just happened. Aww. It's like having dinner then. Oh my god! <laughs> They're so cute. Um... So this card's really cool. I, I, I like this on offense, and I like it on defense. You know, if they're attacking into you, and, you, and they've got, you've got a 1-1, one, one and they think, oh, this is going to go find you, block, and then boom! Serpent mode on them. Or you attack, and it's like your kill shot there again, and it has cycling on here, too. This is a really powerful card. Very, and it, the fact that it's instant speed just pushes this over the top. Um, I can see a world where this only was at sorcery speed, and it attacked, and that was it. Just... Not very good at that point, but this is a very good version of this card. Um, solid two for me. Uh, primarily, it's going to be in the tempo deck, the cycling deck, obviously. Really good stuff here. Hold on, ladies and gentlemen. She's about to lose her mind. Oh, my goodness. Look at it. <laughs> Look, there's somebody running after him. <laughs> Thieving Otter. A two and a blue. Oh my goodness. Creature Otter. Common. It's a two two. And whenever it deals damage to an opponent, you draw a card. Look at it. It's I so know. Pretty. <laughs> Sorry. Um, yeah, this card's also very, 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 very powerful here. Um, these kinds of. Um, I, I, I think it's Ophidian is the creature it's referencing here, where when it deals damage, it draws a card. Um, Obviously, you just can't attack consistently with this thing with that with into impunity here. So if you have things like Capture Sphere, the, the the other spells that can tap your opponent's creatures or bounce them, like this is where this thing plays at its best um, in a very aggressive tempo-minded deck, probably blue red, maybe even blue green. If you have like some pump spells to go along with this thing, they're like, I can't block this thing now because they might you know giant growth it, and then it's a five five, and I'm in trouble. So. This thing's pretty powerful here. It's a solid two. Um, just the fact that it needs to connect consistently is the only downside to it. But if you can, you'll get... If you can draw two of the cards off this over the course of a game, you're in really good shape, I think. Very powerful card. Solid two. Not as good as this, though. Voracious Great Shark. Three and two blue. Really hyped about sharks. I love these sharks. Uh, creature shark. It is a rare with flash. It's a 5 4. It's a big boy. When Voracious Great Shark enters the battlefield, counter target artifact or creature spell. There is no boat big enough. Jaws. Da -da. Da -da. Yeah, the only downside with this thing is that it doesn't fly. Like, you the. You can give it flying. I've... Don't give me ideas. <laughs> Um, so yeah, this, this is a solid three for me. Um, the fact that it's a counter spell, I, I basically look at this. So I'm paying two blue mana for a counter spell and then I'm paying three mana for a five, four shark and then put it all together. And this is the perfect package. I mean, the body is huge. The effect is immediate. Um, you know, I will happily just counter spell anything to get this thing on the board fast enough untap with it, hold up more counter magic, more capture spheres, and just start beating down with my giant buddy here. I like this guy a lot. Alright, moving on. <laughs> oh, goodness. Wink bold. She Aaron. reacts just so randomly to the most, I'm like, it's a, it's a dinosaur, but it, hey, it's but cute, it's I guess. so cute. Look at it, please. Okay, anyway. It's a five and a blue creature dinosaur common. It's a three six, and when it enters the battlefield, or I'm sorry, it enters the battlefield with your choice of a flying counter or hexproof counter. Yeah. Uh, this is a this is a weird one to to choose. Um, obviously, you know, you tailor it to 
the board. You know, if you need to be an aerial flyer, evasive flyer that can get in for a, a significant amount of damage here um, with a massive toughness as well to go along with it. But if I need to play defensively, I'm happy to do that. Probably more often than not, this is going to be a defensive play for me. Make it hexproof and just sit behind it while you hold up, you know, your other counter magic and your other spells to go along with this thing. And then once the, the board is clear, then turn it sideways. Um, pretty cool stuff. I like this card. Yeah, it's a solid, you know, I get it as a two. Um, the modality of it gives it just that extra bit of power for me, I think. Next up. Oh. It's a little flying goat thingy. Parrot goat. Wingspan mentor. Two and a blue. Creature human wizard. Uncommon. One three. When wingspan mentor enters the battlefield, put a, put a flying counter on target non-human creature you control. You can pay two and a blue and tap it. Put a plus one plus one counter on each creature you control with flying. Guess where that flying counter is going? Shark. On that big ass shark. <laughs> Um, and the f so th this is the thing that really trips me up here. So the white one does it for vigilance, and there's a decent amount of vigilance, sure. Um, but like, flying is blue's kind of their jam. Blue and white, it's their jam. So just the ability to play this thing, and then just consistently pump out bigger and bigger flyers. You know, if your opponent doesn't kill this thing on sight. They've just lost that game because, yeah, the activation cost is a little bit pricey, but just to make your flying armada that much bigger each single turn, this thing can get out of control very, very quickly. Um, and the fact that you can do it instant speed, you know, at the end of their turn, instead of, you know, if they've already passed and they've got no effects, you know, don't need to play your counter magic anymore, you start pumping their, your team up. This thing is nuts. Um, yeah, this is a solid two for me. Um, Especially if you and if you are in a dra if you have drafted the blue white flyer deck, um, this thing just gets even more incredible. Um, there's a gold card that gets bigger for each flying creature you control, so like this is just you know public enemy number one for that deck. Super powerful, good stuff, very good stuff. And that is all of the blue cards. We are churning through this, I think. I got this. Good stuff. So be sure to like to share and subscribe and let us know down in the comments uh, what your favorite blue cards in the set are, what do you hope to draft, what do you hope to build around and sealed, are there any cards you're excited to build around, maybe commander or standard, build the shark deck, you will be regretted. And yeah, be sure to go back and watch all the rest of the videos and get ready for your Ikoria release events on Arena, on Magic Online, and hopefully next couple of weeks a paper event at your local game store. And yeah. Have a good night, everybody. Thanks for watching. Bye.